age 12 that I got off her Scholastica, her publisher's website, says, quote, I would like to meet J.K. Rowling. You just can't stop reading the Harry Potter books. Her books seem to have a magical spell on them. Well, guess what? I do believe demons are very, very powerful. They're very, very seducing. And whether wittingly or unwittingly, I believe that J.K. Rowling has opened her up to the spiritual realm and is being used by the spirits uh, to bring forth what has become the Harry Potter series. In fact, check this out. I've got some very, very interesting uh, quotes to say the least. In fact, uh, Rowling had an interest in the occult and in witchcraft since she was young. Rowling admitted, quote, before I even started writing the books, I knew quite a lot about folklore and magic. Well, that's obvious. In fact, many, many Wiccans just trip out on how knowledgeable she is about the occult and so forth. In fact, so great was her obsession in the dark arts, even from childhood, that her girlfriend, Vicki, stated that Rowling's, uh, Vicki Potter, as a matter of fact, stated that Rowling's favorite thing to do in her youth was to dress up as a witch. So ever since she was young, she's wanted to dress up as a witch and to be a witch. Now, it's interesting. She claimed that her brother, Vicki, claimed that her brother would dress up like a wizard, and uh, she and Rowling would dress up as witches, and Rowling would instruct them in witchcraft. And she said uh, that Rowling, of, of Rowling, quote, Joanne was always reading to us. Uh, we would make secret potions for her. She would always send us off to get twigs for the potions. So, you know, she was Halloween and being a witch and, and believing that something magic happens, you know, when you read and so forth. And, and she ended up becoming a school teacher. And what's interesting in time, rather than teaching a couple of her friends on what it meant to be a witch or the powers that you could have to be a witch, now she's teaching millions and millions of our children. And she's giving them a taste of what it could mean to be a witch. And many, as I've mentioned from her own words, want to be witches, want to go to Hogwarts from her own uh, publisher's website that they want to be witches and so forth and wizards. Now, uh, Rowling has uh, said some very interesting things. She says, we all have magic inside us. We all have magic inside us. And it's interesting, when she's asked if this magic was similar to the magic used by witches and wizards in her books, she said, I think we do. Now, Welcome back to Truth Seekers. The phone numbers will go up and you guys can call us if you have any comments on what we just saw. Do you guys see a paradigm shift happening? Can you see uh, how Harry Potter even is being used as part of this paradigm shift to get us into a uh, different view of reality. Uh, potions, um, she's J.K. Rowling, she said, was heavily into making potions and acting the part of a witch as a little girl. And so where is she today as an adult? Writing about witches and riding brooms, uh, you know, having people that she writes about writing brooms and doing all sorts of potions and everything like that. And like you mentioned before, Jay, pharmacopoeia, pharmakia is the Greek word in the Bible used for sorcery. So when it talks about sorcerers in the Bible, it says pharmakia, which means that drugs were used way back then um, for altered states of consciousness. And in the next section of film that we're going to show a little further down the line, we see Harry in a class being instructed by this guy with a big black cape. And the guy is talking basically about meditation, which is really the end all to get to that altered state of consciousness because the battle is for the mind. And uh, Satan wants our minds just like God wants both our minds and our hearts. And there's deception out there. And the question is, how do you know where the truth is? We have a phone call from a guy named Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, yeah, hey, I was just wondering what a paradigm shift is exactly. A paradigm shift? Yeah. A major change in the culture, I guess would be a good definition. Is, does that fit? For you, uh, how about this as an example, going from a uh, leave it to beaver type of society oh, to, okay. to a Madonna and Britney Spears type of society? Yeah. So we've, we've really, our culture's really changed from being more... Christian-oriented to just a free-thinking, religious type of New Age thinking? Mm -hmm. Just just in a 40-year period? Yeah, let me throw something in there. The article I brought you were looking at before the program. There's a principal in Needham, Massachusetts, 
who has made it re a requirement for all seniors in high school, that high school, he's the principal there, for them to be involved in yoga. And uh, it's, it's a requirement. They have to be involved in it. Um, and probably some meditation as well. Um, that, you know, wasn't going on in our culture as much in the past. I, I had an email from a, from a woman who said uh, her first, second grade they, I guess they combined the classes in a school, in a public school district nearby here in Portland area, um, for these kids to, in first and second grade, to practice yoga. And as you saw mentioned by Dave Hunt, that uh, yoga is that raft made up of those cobras, and there's the snake position, and yoga is the physical part that we look at it in the West, of, of getting your body prepared for these altered states of consciousness which allow you, yoga means to be yoked with what they would say is God, Brahma, the cosmic consciousness. And so it prepares your body and if you do the breathing exercises it does more than prepare the body, it starts to attract those demonic forces and that's why they've been doing that in India for a couple of thousand of years. And so, to, to, go ahead Mike. Can you explain to me why this, it, it seems like this is a bad thing to you guys, you know, you, you're saying it's a, there's a lot of demons that are going to come through through these practices. How do you know that these are, this is a demonic practice? Because it's opposite of what the Bible teaches. Well, yep. how, do you, how do you know the Bible's correct? Well, because of prophecy and the Dead Sea Scrolls and the okay. Holy Spirit. Do, yeah. do you know what he's referring to when he says the Dead Sea Scrolls and prophecies? Uh, somewhat. I, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. I don't know much about it. What what uh, what what are you into spiritually or philosophically? Uh, I try to research everything. My my parents didn't push any one thing on me. They just kind of let me. Uh huh. You know, well, what he's referring out. to is that in the Bible, God says He's going to tell the future a hundred percent accurately and never be wrong. Now you'd agree, I guess that to tell the future 100% accurately is a supernatural ability, correct? Yeah, I suppose. You suppose? Yeah, I'll do you know, I mean, do, you know any, do you know anybody can tell the future 100% accurately? Uh, let me explain something. In that. I, I feel like um, that the, the Bible and these prophecies could have been manipulated by world powers. So, uh, the world power that could still be at power could still be manipulating these prophecies what, what, let me ask you, Mike, what world power, what do you mean? Wh wh specifically, what world power? Mm, I don't, you know, I probably don't know any names. The Bible, would call, it, the Bible would call that power Satan and would say that he influences people just like he influenced those people to attack Job's family in the book of Job and kill his kids and, and destroy his livestock because Satan had gone before God and said, hey, you're protecting Job, take the protection away from him. And... Uh, He'll curse you. And God says, okay, I'll let you do certain things to him. And next thing you know is happening is these people are invading and killing Job's family and taking his, his livestock. So something got into their minds is the point there. And Satan can affect our thought patterns, especially if you give yourselves over to pharmacia. We were talking about that drugs which open you to demonic possession. Now getting back to prophecy, which is the key thing, there's no world power that could do this, Mike, I don't think. And this convinced me, you know, me and Dave Hunt is in there. He thinks so much along the same lines that we do that, you know, God in the Bible, over 2,500 years ago, he says that the nation of Israel, because they've been given so much, but yet they didn't follow him, they were going to be scattered throughout the entire earth for a long time, and they'd be killed all over the earth. Their lives would hang in the balance for long periods of time. And then finally, God would bring them back as a nation after a long time. And after he brought them back to their nation, he'd have Persia, Iran. This is in the 38th chapter of Ezekiel, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's what Jay was talking about before. It's all written. We've got copies of, of, of Ezekiel and Isaiah and stuff like that. It says in that chapter there that Israel be brought back to, to, um, to the, the, the people of Israel, be brought back to the land, and that Persia, Iran, would be allied with the northernmost country, Rosh it's called, sounds like Russia. Well, it 